quite sure. Or sextet, I should say. Yes, and it is 30 years of age now, Glenn Catley, been approached since 1993. Good record, 27 wins, 60 beats. 20 wins in cycling. There you go. 33 Kämpfe. Davon hat er 27 gewonnen, 19 durch K.O. Und Danilo Häusler. Yep, Häusler, here we go. He's undefeated in 20. Five wins inside the limit, not a great puncher. 1,78 Meter groß. Er begann seine Profikarriere 1997. Und er hat einen sauberen Kampfrekord von 20 Kämpfen mit 20 Siegen. Wovon er sechs durch K.O. gewonnen hat. And he's 27 years of age. And he's been a pro since 1997. Now, der as I said before, when these Abend two met previously. The first Kampf is the EBU Ringrichter Bob Logist aus Belgien. The Punktrichter von der EBU sind Jean-Louis Leglanc aus Frankreich. Sören Saugmann aus Dänemark. Und Ernst Salzgeber aus Österreich. So they're the officials. And this is the fight. And uh, I tell you what, Heusler, former German champion, making the fifth defense of his title. Uh, you may remember he won it beating uh, Andrei Shikalikov on points over 12 rounds. And so far, only one of those wins has been inside them against Mustafa Ilya last year. So what on earth can Hoister bring to the table that Cap hasn't seen before and hasn't mastered before? That's the question. For so Glenn Catley then, shaven skull going forward. Likes to take the fight from the front, takes a left hook early on. And of course, if you want to uh, make sure of victory, take your own referee. And that of course is in your own hands. Catley hits hard enough here to really bother Hoistler. Danilo Hoistler is not a great big puncher, only a 25% stoppage uh, ratio. Five wins in 20, beaten inside the limit. And, uh, but he's a hard worker and he's a fairly tough man, but he does bang up around the face. Not a tremendous hitter. But a hard worker, for certain. And I remember Glenn Catley from the, his second professional fight. Oh, so there is he. What's happened here? What has happened here? Well, he's got a cut in his left eye there. Oh, goodness me, that's a terrible cut. The referee Bob Lowe just was just telling the, uh, the judges that was an accidental cut, uh, or an accidental butt. Well, I'm not too certain about that, and uh, Catley gets thrown to the floor there. That's a very bad cut. Well, we'll have to see that again on the slow motion. Did Catley bang in a right hand? Or did they clash heads? That we'll have to wait and see. Of course, Glenn going for that cut with the right hand, takes a left hook, though. Needs to watch for that. And I suspect now that Catley's feeling pretty good about himself. He's got the champion. In trouble here with a cut very early on. That left hook of Hoisters is beginning to become something of a problem for Catley. Hoister trying to wipe away the blood inside the final minute of round one. And again, decent work here from Catley. I've got a feeling Glenn Catley's winning this opening session, although it's been pretty close. Oh, good. What a lovely punch that was. A beautiful right hand there from Danilo Hoistler and Catley in serious trouble. Well, he's up at about four and he's wobbling all over the place here in round one. He says, I'm OK. Inside the... Oh, goodness me. Hoistler bang on top of him here. Goodness, what is Bob Lowe just playing at? How on earth did Hoistler get to Catley so quickly? He was not in a neutral corner. Well, Catley now fighting for his life here. 
bangs over a right hand on the cut and that's a cracking round what a start well i suspect that's going to go had to go down as it not a 10-8 round by any means to oisler but 10-9 certainly to him wow that was a what on earth was bob Lowe just playing out there he allowed hoistler well he didn't send hoistler back to a neutral corner bang that's a lovely knockdown beautiful punch caught catley square on the chin down he went possibly up too soon bang great punch well i'd like to see if there was uh Oh, well, well, Denny Mancini there saying that uh, Catley used his head to inflict that cut. We'll see. Hang on. Well, well, there was definitely a clash of heads there. Definitely a clash of heads there. And that's where the cut was, was occurred. Well, there was definitely a clash of heads. No doubt about that. Manfred Volker, the trainer, having a very, very close look at that cut as Oyster comes out for round two of this scheduled 12 rounds. So drama then. In the opening session, hoist the cut. I didn't see a right hand land. That was definitely a clash of heads that caused the cut. Not a butt, but a clash. Hoist the lands a lovely punch to put Catley on the floor towards the end of the round. I'm slightly disturbed that Bob Lowe just allowed Hoistler virtually free free access to Catley when he got up for that knockdown stop, stop. and it's ironic isn't it that uh, Glenn Catley had a fantastic spell he won the world title if you remember rightly in fact they won an eliminator beating Eric Lucas in the 12th round 12th and final round the Canadian and he won the title winning Marcus Bayer of Germany in Germany in the 12th and final round and then, ironically, he lost at this first defence of the South African, Dingan Tafella, again in the 12th and final round. Um, so 12 is Glenn's lucky and unlucky number, I think. And this is his uh, second bid to become European champion, beaten on a majority points verdict when these two met previously, and Catley looked to be a very good winner. And again, punching well here. Hoister wipes away the blood again and there must be concern for Hoister's fans there's blood now on Catley's face don't quite know where that's come from it might be the blood from Hoister's cut but I suspect it's a cut on Catley's right eye so Catley then cut on the right eye by the look of things down as well in the opener well Chris Sanagar is going to have some work to do at the end of this round on Catley's cut oh again a nice left hook there Hoistler walking straight into it Buffalo just taking a look at that cut. Box on, he says. That is a bad cut in anyone's book. But it forces for well, I was about to say it's, gonna, it's not bleeding in the eye, but I think it is. Close round this one. Catley's possibly. In fact, I think Catley's just. Yep. So round a piece then. And as I say, I never went 10 8 in that first round, regardless of the knockdown. Catley had done so well. Well, Danny Mancini, the cuts man, that's what he's brought in for to take care of cuts, and he's very good at what he does. So he's around three. So Glenn Catley then in the purple trunks and the Bristol boy colours. I think he won the second round, lost the first. Well, Bob Lowe just said, warning Catley to watch his head once more, and I'll take points off you, says uh, the referee. Got to say, this is a much better performance by Hoistler than it was the first time these two met.
Of course, it's interesting to note that if this goes beyond three rounds, it could go to a technical decision. Um, I, I do believe that, uh, well, I didn't see a right hand land, so I've got to suggest that uh, that cut was caused by a clash of heads, which we did see. Again, nice work there from Hoistler. He hung back far too often in the first fight, not doing that here. well here at the moment. Oh, what a nice right there from Glenn Catley. And now the blood really is beginning to flow here out of that Hoistler cut. Danilo Hoistler though comes back with a three-punch combination before running into more punches from Cantley. Stop, stop, stop. Well, what's he going to do here? Oh, come on, referee. Well, that's the second daft thing that Pablo just has done in this fight so far. Well, he allowed us to say... Uh, Hoist the free access to Catley when he got up. He was not in a neutral corner by any means. And now he's just taking the points off for no illegal use of the head. Volker there doing what so many corner men do you don't put water on a cut So into round four then of this uh, European Super Middleweight Championship and uh, well I've got to say that round three would have been a 10-8 round for the champion simply because Catley had a point deducted for alleged illegal use of the head which I did not see. I've got to say that the cut was caused by an accidental clash of heads in round one and that's unfortunate for Hoistler. something it's a much better performance now from Hoister than when they first met Boxon says the referee. Oh, looked uh, poised to stop it there, didn't he? I've got to say that uh, possibly Hoist is beginning to grow into this championship. He's, uh, he's certainly boxing much better here than previously. And yet, Glenn Catley. Still, I think uh, a punt or two in front so far in this fourth round.
Well, well that was a clash of heads there for just a second. Well, last half minute then of round four. And I, by the way, don't believe that a fight, uh, a championship should be lost on a cut, or indeed won on a cut. Um, there should be another way of deciding. Stop, stop. Watch your head, watch your head. Watch your head, watch your head. Box. Sporting moment there from both boxers, and there's the bell to end the fourth round. And still Hoister covered in blood. Well, cracking crowd here. and he's still working very hard on that cut. Yeah, it's interesting. Referee there saying to, I think to the doctor outside the ring, next round I'll stop the fight. Now what was that about? So round five then. Box on. So hoist through Catley and uh, still at stake, the European Championship. Catley, um, not a million miles away, in my opinion. I've got him 37, 38 behind. And of course, that 10-8 uh, round would have gone, it would be dead level if it wasn't for that. Then of a scheduled 12 and uh, Glenn Catley. Well, he's uh, he's certainly within a hair's breadth here of Danilo Hoist of the champion. Go, go. Well, you may have you you would have heard, I'm sure, Bob Lowe just saying I'll stop the fight in the next round. I heard it. Once again, the blood flows from that hoistler cut. And it's hard to know if Glenn Catley is actually damaged facially because the blood sprays all over the place. Nice no. left hand work there from Catley. Once again, well, that was accidental again from Catley, but very clumsy. Well, what's this now? Will the referee stop the fight as he said he would in the interval? Well, it looks like it could all be over here. Well, he's, he's gone to the judges. Well, an accidental clash of heads, he's saying. And this is that moment again. Bang. And then a right hand was thrown. And that was the moment when uh, Hoister was cut. Well, it's all over by the look of things. Yes, indeed it is. 
Well, the referee's called a halt. So what now? Chris Sanagar there having a word with the referee, who I don't believe handled that contest particularly well. Well, they're going to go to the scorecards with, uh, I think, with four rounds gone. Because the fifth wasn't completed. You can only score a complete round. Here we go. Das Reglement sagt, dass man bei einem Cut, den ein Mann, ein Boxer über dem Augen, äh, an der Augenbraue erlitten hat, durch einen Accidental Headbutt, das heißt also durch Versehen, durch Kopfstoßen, das Reglement sagt, dass nach der vierten Runde, bis zur vierten Runde einschließlich, ein äh, technisches Unentschieden gewertet werden könnte. Danach, also in der fünften Runde jetzt, muss man sich die Punktzettel ansehen. Und man hat also gepunktet bis zu dem Moment, als der Kampf abgebrochen wurde. Und das Punkturteil lautet 49 zu 44, 48 zu 45, 48 zu 46. Immer noch Europameister. Daniel well, well, well. Heusler. Well, they've got the scorecards and they've given it to Danilo Heusler after five rounds. When the fifth round wasn't completed, um, how on earth they could have counted round five when there's still half a minute left in the round, I do not know. It should have been 30-something, not 40-something. I actually had uh, Hoister in front by a point of 38-37. I'll tell you what, that is a very relieved corner. Very 